Hello, this is Lee Anthony Davis here with another announcement video on my YouTube channel. Uh, the day is Sunday, the 8th of October. Yes, it's that time of the end of the week time, as they say, uh, coming into a new week. And uh, here on my video, I will be giving you uh, the group contributor, uh, birthday, uh, also uh, Doctor Who news, updates, Doctor Who DVD collection, this time series three uh, with David Tennant. Uh, Dot two quiz question and the answer from yesterday. Also, uh, my comments section, and of course, lost, uh, and of course, uh, I would like to thank you all for watching my Doctor Who quiz. Uh, I see a few hits on there. Uh, I'm really pleased that you took the time to uh, so, sort of endure uh, that marathon. Uh, but I thought I'd do something fun you know uh, as i usually do i used to do them as 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 you know uh, that's why the lateness of this video has gone out this time because of that reason uh because i did four videos yesterday it's not just that i had to go to facebook and welcome some new members i had to uh do birthday announcements uh pin them up and everything then i had to go out and uh, do some things that i needed to do uh so uh, i was t that's why this video is late uh but it, everything is as normal as usual you know you'll get the usual crap from me all over uh, to the end of this video right before i start I'd like to thank the subscribers who just joined uh, this channel thank you very much i appreciate it uh also uh uh, yes, uh, my uh, in the comment up section at the end of this, I've got a uh, page and group to tell you about, but I'll get to that in a minute. Right, what I wanted to say is uh, I'm going to try and keep this video really short. Uh, I want to beat my record of 20 minutes, 49 seconds. Uh, it's shorter than yesterday, uh, than the video before, so I'm going to make this one, uh, I'm going to try and beat my record here and I'm trying to make these videos shorter and shorter so at least they're more amenable to you to listen to than go listen to me waffle on for about 20 to 30 minutes right okay then let's get on with it right okay uh group of the day for uh Saturday the 7th of October goes to the music group congratulations to them and their members and on uh contributor of the day for Saturday the 7th of October goes to Robert Neil McGinn Right, I will post them on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my story later on. Right, moving on, it's birthday time. Uh, they're celebrating their birthdays on Sunday, the 8th of October. These people are Minty Man, Paul Stacey, George DK, Wasim Husseini, Ashley Powell, Jovan Hernandez, and someone I know very well, Philip Fairbairn. Philip Fairburn, have a happy birthday from me, Lee Anthony Davis. Wish you well. Uh, I will be doing, uh, he's on my group as well, on my Lee Anthony Davis, the Doctor Who group. Uh, so I'll be doing a video announcement. I usually do that with my uh, members. If they're having a birthday, I'll do a vid special video for them so everyone can see it. Uh, and instead of the usual uh, type it down crap. Right, okay then. Uh, right, so that's that out of the way. Doctor Who news. Uh, former Doctor Who star and also who also appeared on Doctor Who's Jodie Whittaker's last adventure, The Power of the Doctor, uh, Sophie Aldred has given the thumbs up to RTD's new direction on the show and believes it will bring in a new fan base. Well, she may be right there, actually, because it will do, because uh, I know what uh, RTD is planning for the show. Show. He's uh, he's obviously uh, carrying to a certain faction like uh, Chris Chibnall did, uh, so he's going to bring in more viewers from that direction. Uh, uh, apparently, uh, well, she didn't. Uh, it's not it's not a rumor. This it's fact that she admitted that her son is gay, and he's a what you call uh, without sort of uh, demeaning the word. Uh, I've got to find the word. Yes, female. Artist impressionist, I would say, right? That would be a fair way, a fair assessment from me to, to be kind about the uh, what he does. So he's a female artist impressionist and he will now be watching Dot 2 because there's a drag queen in it as well. You know, the uh, evil villain, even villainess. Uh, she's appearing in the 60th anniversary. You know who she is. Uh, so it's going to appeal to that faction as well. Uh, so anyway, uh, please, I offer my apologies if I've sort of, come across the wrong way about uh, saying those things but i have met sophie Aldrin. well not met her but i spoke to her on a live chat room a few times uh 
uh, well, no, once. I spoke to her once, it was last year, uh, and I asked her the question of uh, about the water tank incident you know when she was uh when it when the glass cracked and they had to pull her out uh, and she told me uh when i asked her the question she responded positively and said it uh it wasn't for, if it wasn't for the quick thinking of sylvester mccoy there would it could have been more serious uh, because the tank obviously was overflowed too much water in there and the glass wasn't well it was glass but it started to bulge didn't it and then the bloody thing exploded you know collapsed uh, but Sylvester McCoy ran onto the floor and says get her out of there seriously he said that get her out of there and uh, they pulled her out quick but she 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 got away with a few cuts and uh, bruises but she was all right uh, but that was a stunt that went wrong uh, one of, that's that's one of them things Doctor Who had many of those things happen but that was one serious incident that is uh, detailed and uh, the fan base know all about it but I asked her the question of that and uh, she gave me a very positive answer a very nice lady and I enjoyed every minute of uh, the time that I was speaking to on the live chat room Right, okay then. Right, moving on. Uh, updates. Uh, my page, uh, the Lee Anthony Davis, the Doctor Who group, uh, page, the Lee Anthony Davis, the Doctor Who page uh, has now moved up to 109 followers. Uh, my group has reached its target. I wanted 100 members. I've got 100 members. It hasn't gone any further than that at the moment. I have, I've had people wanting to join, but... Pardon me, but I'm not really having people any Tom, Dick and Harry on there, you know. They've got to be Dotsu fans. Uh, the ones that I've had are religious, uh, music, uh, political, that's another one. Uh, but I won't let them on because uh, obviously they're self-promoting and uh, I do not want that uh, because I want... Uh, because the people that are on there, I know them, uh, most of them anyway, and uh, they won't leave the group. They are dedicated fans and uh, they... They 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 have a fair assessment on the show itself. They never sort of uh, ridicule anybody. That's why I have them on there because they uh, they give good comments. Uh, they if somebody says something, they don't sort of go negative on it like I've seen on some live chat rooms. But anyway, uh, but that that is it really. I'm really happy with that. I'm about and that brings me on to something else. I will tell you about in a minute. Right, moving on. My Dot Two DVD collection. This time it's series three. The uh, David Tennant and Mar and uh, Freema Algerman, uh, who plays Martha Jones. This is her first appearance. We also get a first appearance of the first assistant that we didn't realise we were getting in Series 4. Uh, yes, Catherine Tate in The Runaway Bride. Very good story. Uh, I think she brings a lot of humour to it, and which makes it watchable, you know? Uh, the way she does. I mean, I've watched the Catherine Tate show, and, and you can see some of that in there, in her in her character. Uh, so, yes, it's a good story. The Ragnos, uh, the first time we see the Ragnos in it, uh, played by uh, Julie... I can't remember her name. Uh, uh, she's been in Cold Feet, I think, and stuff like that. But anyway, never mind. Uh this is a good story. I liked it. I really uh, think this is uh, what uh, defines uh, Catherine Tate's character. And that's why she's loved uh, by a lot of fans. Uh, so they're glad to see her back in the 60th anniversary. Right, OK then. Uh, and then we go into Smith & Jones. This introduces Martha Jones to the show. This is after the sad farewell of Rose Tyler. So uh, it's a good pun, that, and it's Smith and Jones. Dr. Smith, which uh, David Tennant uses as an alias, and uh, Jones is obviously Martha Jones. So Smith and Jones, it reminds me of Mel Smith and Griffiths Jones, you know, Smith and Jones. But never mind. Uh, it's a good story. Uh, this is where we have the Jadoon uh, brought into it. Uh, it's a good. Uh, I like the way uh, uh, the hospital is taken out of uh, its place and put on the moon. <laughs> I thought that was good. Uh, his, his special effects are very good as well. Uh, right, I'm going to move on anyway. Uh, the next one's The Shakespeare Code. Uh, this is a good story as well. Uh, this is about witches, uh, many, uh, but it's not black magic. It's actually uh, evil aliens using their powers, but nobody. But the, uh, they arrive in the 15th century or something. Uh, what are they called? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, they, uh, they basically... Uh, use the power of words didn't they to uh, to get the uh, to to take over control and they wanted it in Shakespeare's place so they wrote it for him in his subconscious uh, so he was asleep there doing this like that you remember like that writing like that and the play was unacceptable to the guy that 
authorises it and he dies of a horrible death of drowning in his own, I don't know how, where all this water came from. Uh, and uh, basically, it's a good story, but they had a bit of Harry Potter element in it, didn't they? You know, uh, with Martha Jones saying them last two words, uh, I can't remember, serocious, derocious, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it's all good fun and all silliness. Uh, but yeah, it's a winner. It's a winner. Uh, Gridlock, uh, yeah, sort of. Uh, I like the theme music they used in that with the build up and stuff. Uh, this introduced us back to the uh, Sisters of Mercy, or one of them survived anyway. And we saw uh, the face of Bo. Uh, uh, we were told that the face of Bo is actually John Barrowman's Captain Jack character who lived forever. And then obviously he basically became old and old and old and eventually there was nothing left of him just a face i don't know and they called him the face of boa i don't know uh, rtd can only answer that one uh anyway getting away from that it it was all right but it wasn't a good story this was about drugs wasn't it really uh, another drug uh, theme to it <coughs> excuse me and uh, moving on to daleks of manhattan the predictability of another dalek adventure sees them in manhattan and also uh we uh, get to see uh, a dalek human conversion uh so <laughs> uh it was all right as it goes but i think it was made for the american audience that I do think so. Uh, that woman in Spooks was in it. Uh, that uh, played that singer Tallulah or something. I don't know. Uh, she was in it. Uh, quite a few. Uh, the guy from Casualty. Uh, he was in it. The black guy. Uh, I can't know. He's I'm not very good with names at the moment. Uh, but anyway, he was in it as well. Rick something. I think his name is. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, we move on to uh, the second one was the uh, evolution of Daleks. Sort of a sort of watered down version of what the first one was the first one was a good one because it was a build up and a reveal the second one was a sort of uh i don't know the the predictability of the daleks being destroyed uh but we did see dalek khan make a quick ex exit and then there's a reason why he got away and he flew into the time uh, war didn't he and then went completely mad and then he became uh davros's uh, achilles heel in the end he turned that he turned uh, he was the one that was prophesizing uh, Davros's and his Daleks' downfall. And one of the Doctor's uh, companions would die. Uh, that was in the uh, the journey's end, I think it was. Uh, but it was a good story. But uh, that's uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. But yeah, uh, Dalek Khan gets away. He's the last survivor of the Dalek. The, uh, the uh what's it called so, uh the oh wait does it the circle i don't know what it was some sort of elitist uh dalek think tank uh Oh, uh, the uh, Brotherhood of Khan, I don't know. Does it matter? Right, okay then. Uh, moving on, uh, the Lazarus Experiment. Uh, all right, it's a sort of Jekyll and Hyde uh, sort of theme to it, isn't it? It turns into this monster. Uh, still has that sort of theme to it. And unfortunately, uh, it's all right, but I don't know. It, it It's a sort of thing, new, new direction they took the show, isn't it? Uh, they wanted to, uh, you know, the Doctor says that I'm the only one that can mess around with time because I know what I'm doing. Uh, but unfortunately, the other guy didn't, and he was uh, doing it to prolong his customers or something like that. Uh, but Mark Gattis uh, plays it well, doesn't he? Uh, good, good, uh, uh, good. Well, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Uh, remember him from the League of Gentlemen uh, before. Uh, so anyway, uh, 42 was a load of rubbish. Uh, I'm not saying that in a nasty way. It was. It was basically 42 minutes, meaning 42. Uh, it was Chris Chibnall's uh, story. I didn't like it. It was all about running here, running there, explosions there, explosion. you know. Uh, it just didn't have that same sort of feeling as uh, many stories before. Uh, and I think there was a sort of uh, hiatus on, well, shall I say, a sort of reeling in on some of his scripts uh, that wouldn't work. Uh, and he had to redo it again, I believe. But it doesn't matter. It, it, was, it is watchable, but not rememberable, if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, moving on to Human HF, one of the most fantastic stories of this season, uh, the uh, family of blood this is. Uh, they want the Doctor's last regeneration so they can live. Uh, and the Doctor has to revert to a human uh, using a biological uh, watch or something, and uh, it changes his uh, genetics uh, into a human, in other words, inside out. 
uh, and he becomes human. And then he realises he wants to stay as a human. He wants a life that he could never have. A uh, very good story. Uh, Martha Jones plays his uh, maid, uh, but she knows the truth. And uh, eventually the doctor wakes out of his uh, biological clock, uh, opens the watch, and then suddenly, bang, he's, he's back again. Uh, and that is leading us nicely on to The Master, the Master returns in the sound of drums and the last of the Time Lords and, of course, where it all starts, Utopia. Uh, when you hear those drummings, when it... Like that, you knew something was coming uh, and you didn't know it was Professor... Uh, what's his name? Uh, you are not alone. Uh, you are Professor Yana. <laughs> I was just trying to... Uh, remember the words uh, so the abbreviation was y-a-n-a -A. Uh, so anyway uh, it was the obvious clue uh, the master had hid himself in a human uh, he was found on the coast of the silver de desolation uh, and uh, as a child he became human uh, to hide away from the dalek uh, war that uh, enthralled the Time Lords. He escaped, he was created, he was resurrected because they needed a warrior and he was the perfect warrior. But when he saw the Emperor of the Dalek took over the Crucible, he decided to run and he became a human so they could never find him. That was the gist of the story. It was a good story. I liked it. I liked the build up. It was passionate. It was good. It was powerful music. And it was all it was always moving, so that was a good story. Uh, uh, the end of uh, the last of the time lords, I thought, was a bit of a uh, shall I say a lackluster ending. The master gets shot. Uh, we know he's not dead because he'll come back, uh, and he did. And that's basically it, really. It was a good story. We say goodbye to Martha Jones, uh, and uh, that is that, really. Uh, this leads us on to, uh, was it the uh, Kali Minogue venture in The Voyage of the Damned? Anyway, moving on. I'm not going to uh, uh, emphasise any more. It's, uh, it's a good story. I like it. The, the three of them are what you call an arc, isn't it, really, for the master? But it was, uh, uh, they said it was a big risk bringing him back. But I don't think so. I think he's a winner because he's Doctor Who's uh, Mariarty, isn't he, really? Uh, so it was inevitable the show would have someone from from the show in this in this in these adventures what a way to to introduce him back to the public i suppose they when they did the christopher eccleston regeneration that was a big risk because nobody knew what a regeneration was well the classic people did the ones from the classic era did but the new adventure the ones that just watched it didn't know what it was so they, but it was a winner uh uh, so this this also was a winner as far as I'm concerned. So that is the Doctor Who DVD uh, Series 3 collection of mine. I'll look at Series 4 tomorrow. Right, moving on. Uh, coming to the end. Oh, uh, let's see. Do a Doctor Who question. Here we go. Uh, what I wanted to know, there was a story in Doctor Who which related to the science fiction adventure, which was a classic, cult classic, Forbidden Planet. What well, I wanted to know, which adventure of Doctor Who was sort of mirrored with that? You know, it was uh, basically a takeoff. Uh, the event, the answer is Planet of Evil. Right, and now here's another, uh, another question for you. Which Dalek story uh, was the first Dalek, which Dalek story showed the first ever Dalek lifting off the ground, going up the stairs? Uh, I'll give you a clue. It wasn't the modern era one, you know, the new adventures in Dalek. That that already that wasn't that wasn't unique. It had been done in the classics. So I want to know which adventure it was. Okay, right. Moving on. Comments section. This is a be interesting. I'm nearly there for a, another record breaking time on my video here. Here we go. I'm just going to get into it. Comments. Uh, just coming now. My channel. Here we go. There we are. No, there we are. Right, I've got some comments here. Right, I'll just read them out quickly. Uh, this is for Lost in Space. It's so hilarious to see those two guys in gorilla costumes at the end of the cliffhanger. I suppose in them days it could have been considered scary for the children. Uh, quickly reading on. Uh, let's see. 
Let's uh, get the children. And they look in the sort. They look the sort of costumes that you would see in a Carry On film. But nevertheless, it's all good fun. Yeah, thank you for that. Talking about these two uh, guys dressed up in gorilla costumes, looking at scary at the end of the cliffhanger in Lost in Space. Yeah, thank you for that comment, my friend. Uh, uh, this one's uh, from Aaron Baker. Those men in those monkey suits remind me of what Doctor Who did with the pantomime horse known as the Melker. <laughs> Right, and I've got another comment uh, from, uh, from uh, was it, uh, this is from the sidelines. Uh, thank you for this, I appreciate your uh, comment. Bob May and Dawson Palmer were wearing them costumes. Yeah, thank you uh, from the sidelines, I do appreciate, because uh, I like people giving facts in this. Right, and uh, so I'll give you a tick on that one. It's a very good one, and I'll give you one of those as well. Right, thank you very much. That's it. Just telling you, coming up, uh, I've got another Lost in Space uh, DVD coming up. Uh, DVD, cliffhanger. And finally, tomorrow, the big one, the Sarah Jane Adventures, Leander Davis, the Sarah Jane Adventures page and group coming out. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching, and bye for now.